Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzzweaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If this is your first time here to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning visitor, a loyal follower on Alternative Tech and or here on YouTube, I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support. We started off with MRC Newsbusters. Arizona fights back. Attorney General sues, says Google tracks and exploits consumers for financial gain. Now, this isn't anything particularly new, but uh, their line of reasoning is if a user tried to stop Google from tracking location history, the lawsuit alleged that the company could still track users. The lawsuit claimed turning ads personalization off does not stop Google from presenting ads based on a user's location, the lawsuit alleged. Rather, Google will instead simply present ads based on more general location information. This isn't anything particularly new. There have been any number of different lawsuits against Google. But of course, Google's line of reasoning will be, we're simply trying to provide the conveniences for our user experience, and therefore we have these in here, and it is anonymous. And But if they really wanted to, it doesn't matter. You could use private tracking block. You could use VPN. They're always going to be able to locate a particular user if they ever needed one. But this is just an attempt by Arizona, perhaps, to just kind of rattle Google's cage. How many times have we seen Dorsey? How many times have we seen Pachai? How many times have we seen Zuckerberg? But on the Hill, in front of a commission, and very little ever gets done. But nonetheless, this is just kind of an interesting phase as we see this also happening with DeSantis in Florida with some of the uh, concepts and laws that he is coming up with. Speaking of cyber, from the Washington Post... JBS, world's biggest meat supplier, says its systems are coming back online after cyber attack shut down plants in U.S. Another cyber attack here we have. It's the latest in a rash of recent high-profile cyber attacks highlighting the vulnerability of corporations, government agencies, and civil society groups. As suspected foreign hackers become more brazen in their demands, Three weeks ago, a ransomware attack on Colonial Pipeline disrupted the East Coast fuel infrastructure, setting off panic buying and temporary gasoline shortages across several states. Not too surprising, but you have to remember that Colonial Pipeline, within just a few hours of having been hacked, paid the ransomware. So yes, they're going to be more brazen, but what's interesting about this is the targeting. First, they go after fuel, and now they're going after meat. And what does that sound like to you? It sounds kind of like almost like some form of uh, climate control, climate change, global warming activism. It's hard to really narrow it down to that, you know, those specifics. But it isn't a, a particular mystery that uh, these are becoming a little more coincidental, particularly with levels of activism. And uh, if you were around when I was doing the... Friday vlogs during the pandemic, I did a segment on how pollution was so low in so many areas. It was showing up on radar, like how few emissions were being emitted, and you could see it with red or different colorations. It was really quite amazing. Moving on to yet another topic that is a center for many of us here in the States, and that is critical race theory. So I wanted to play this little episode here, and I hope that this gets more coverage because this was trending the other day, so let me play it. Daddy teaches you you can be anything in this world that you want to be, right? Don't daddy teach you that? Yeah, and it doesn't matter if, if you're black or white or any color. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, yellow, yellow. right? Black. And, and how we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are. And if they're nice and smart. See, this is, how, this is how children think right here. Critical race theory wants to end that. Not with my children. It's not going to happen. My baby's going to know that no matter what she wants to be in life, all she has to do is work hard, and she can become that. All right, that's a lovely sentiment. I didn't want to get a uh, copyright on that because I don't know if the music is or, or, or his message here because it was uh, viral for several days. But I wanted you guys to hear that because 
This is the common sense thinking that I try to bring to you guys as my subscribers. Is a common sense, rational, sit down, let's talk like regular human beings about what's going on in the world versus the sensationalizing, the grandstanding, the just absurd behavior we see so much from the mainstream media. But this guy right here nails it in a minute. Exactly what's going on with critical race theory. And this is continuing to be pushed. I'm glad that people are becoming more aware of these types of things because it's just, just bordering on the ridiculous. But I thought this was a really awesome sentiment. I will include it down below if you guys want to watch it, the entirety of it, as well as share it yourselves. And we're back here in Atlanta from MA or MAGA Conservatives. Conservative business group sues MLB to bring All-Star Game back to Atlanta wants $100 million in damages. Now, we've covered this story before because the predicted amount of loss for Cobb County, which incidentally is a very blue county with a lot of blue business people. So I find it interesting that conservative businesses are the one taking the steps forward to try to uh, bring the All-Star Game back to Atlanta. But $100 million in damages is about where they think it would have been without the game coming. So a conservative group representing small businesses is dropping the hammer on Major League Baseball after the league moved its all-star game out of Atlanta, Georgia, over a new voting law. So the voting law in and of itself is really kind of a really ridiculous point of argument because if someone wants to apply for a, um absentee ballot or even a mail-in ballot, then the same process that you would go through to obtain that is the same process you would go through to get a voter ID. Now, in some areas of Atlanta or Georgia, you can go to the post office, you can go to the library, you can go to the city hall, or if you're using your mobile phone or other device, if you can access these areas to get uh, your mail-in ballot or a absentee ballot, then you can get a voter ID because the information is a click away or... At, as, at the locations that I mentioned, the library, city hall, the post office, uh, or other government agencies in your area, or, for example, if you are accessing the internet, you can just get a voter ID. It's totally possible. So I'm not sure why, but I got into this long-winded argument with this one guy. It's very rare that I block anybody on on any of the social media, but I had to, his guy was Asian. He just kept throwing up article after article about Brian Kemp, who you see here in this image. Instead of, he tried, was trying to make an argument about it being um, obviously discriminatory, but like I said, if, if someone can go on, if someone can go to the library, the post office, city hall, or online to get an absentee ballot or a, a uh, mail-in ballot, they can go on there and get a voter ID. It's just as easy. And as of today, this recording on Wednesday, guys, if you want to freeze the video here on this my new rig will be coming today so i'm very much looking forward to it i don't anticipate it really kind of affecting any video coverage uh, i may be doing some video shorts once it does arrive but if you guys want to freeze the video here check out the specs should be coming in today there was a little bit of a delay because of as you guys know during the pandemic there was a shortage of semiconductors as well as silica so that's kind of slowed things down for like the car industry and everything else. So there's this shortage. So we just saw, for example, from this article about the cyber attack, meat shortage. I hear there's a chicken shortage. There was a bit of a fuel shortage. And now, of course, across the world, there is a silica and semiconductor shortage. I don't know. Well, some people say it's kind of one of those things that was generated, you know, that supply and demand kind of thing to drive up the market to get money flowing again. You know, uh, you take your pick on how it how it may have uh, oriented, but I think it was probably because of the pandemic and just a lot of these businesses and companies having to uh, shut down and, um, you know, go to lower levels of labor and stuff like that. So we weren't getting a lot of this stuff out, but that's, 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 <laughs> that's what I wanted to cover for you guys this week. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the comments. Your participation here on the channel is always greatly appreciated. Of course, below this video, you can find the various social media links that I belong to. So avail yourselves of that. And of course, appearing there on the screen, that would be the channel icon for YouTube specifically. You guys can click on that. And of course, you will get a notification on selecting 
notifications, which will allow you to select whether or not you want to get information as soon as it's released, like the video shorts and additional content here on the channel. And I will see you guys right there behind the camera next week.